fastest growing prison population in the U.S., increasing by over 700% since 1977, mostly for drug law violations, one third of the affected women, compared to one fifth of men now. Be it resolved, therefore, the U.S. Conference of Mayors believes the war on drugs has failed and calls for a new bottom line in drug policy. U.S. drug policy should not be measured solely on drug use levels or number of people in prison, but rather on the amount of drug-related harm reduced. So we get to what LEAP is about. We're looking for alternative policies to solve this problem. We want to decriminalize, not decriminalize it. If you talk about decriminalization, you're talking about the wrong thing because there's still a penalty. You just may not go to jail if you have to pay a fine, so they're still telling you it's wrong. And I'm here to tell you right now, we don't advocate drug use. But it's a personal decision. If you want to do it, and you're willing to take the consequences for the choice, you have the right to make a choice. When you get into trouble, if you do, as some people do, then maybe we should offer you a way out, like you do now with alcoholics. Give them a program if they're willing to get into it and say, I have a problem, I need to get out of it. That's what we think we should be doing. Well, first of all, we have to remove the profit mode and continuously enhance for 37 years by our war on drugs. We want to end prohibition. I know we figured out, as we mentioned before, that prohibition doesn't work. It never has worked with humanity. Uh, it's actually not the first prohibition in the U.S., but the one most known about the alcohol <coughs> prohibition lasted 13 years. Started by a group of women, and actually, we'll point out later, ended by a group of women, and the government's need for taxation. Another aspect of that from the 1930s. Anybody tell me what the first prohibition was of the failure? Think biblical. First chapter of the Bible. Commonly known as the apple. A woman. Sorry, girls. <laughs> Come on, Adam, take a bite of this, you know. It lasted two weeks. Don't touch that. You don't eat the fruit. They were penalized. They got thrown out of the garden. We say legalize drugs. People say, doesn't that cause everyone? Is that going to cause everyone to run out and start using drugs and getting wild and crazy? We don't think so. We have proof. Tenth graders in Holland where everything is more or less legal. They don't allow people to sell it to other people. They want you to get it from places that they allow to sell it. I don't have a problem with that. People who have tried marijuana, 10th graders, is down to 28%. In the U.S., 41% of the 10th graders. That's sort of that fruit of the forbidden tree kind of thing. What do you mean I can't do this? Why? You might have asked that question yourself. Marijuana use, lifetime prevalence between the USA and the Netherlands. There's the numbers. We're about to go under our current policy. Heroin use, lifetime prevalence. A lot more than that. Homicide rate per 100,000 population in the USA is 8. It's almost up to 9 now in the last couple of years. In the Netherlands, it's 2 per 100,000. And yes, they have a smaller population but it's a, a rate per 100,000. The only time our homicide rate was that high in this country was during alcohol prohibition. And they repealed that constitutional amendment. By the way, you might know that it took a constitutional amendment to get alcohol prohibition. There is no such constitutional amendment today. They just decided it was illegal. The reason for that is because we have various groups fighting over the right to sell people the drugs and get the territory because of the immense profit. And so there's a lot of homicides going on over who gets this territory. We had a lot of gang problems in the mid-80s, a lot of fights because they financed themselves, especially in the poor neighborhoods, by selling crack and so forth. So incarceration rates in Western Europe per 100,000 population added below 100 people in the U.S., 726. Here are some possible outcomes of legalization. 1.9 million fewer people are arrested each year. $69 billion saved. We use for something better. So we say legalized drugs, and we say have the federal government produce those drugs. I'm kind of libertarian. That doesn't go very well in libertarian circles, but it's better than what we do now. 
And there are some reasons for that. Outcomes of government production is it's quality control, production for consistency, standardized measurement of potency, and an end to overdoses. <coughs> then we want to distribute free maintenance doses of drugs to any adult requesting them. And we mention adults because I don't think we should be giving drugs to children until they're able to make a good decision on their own. Outcomes, possible outcomes, no profit motive for drug distribution, no individuals selling drugs, no crimes committed just to obtain the drugs, no criminal association for drug users, no diseases passed by sharing needles. Tremendous stats coming out of the Netherlands on that one. Users are able to stabilize their addictions. No shootings of dealers by other dealers. No police killed fighting a drug war. More important to me, actually, no one is killed by the police in the drug war. You all remember last November, Atlanta, Georgia? Did you read that story? A 92-year-old woman? Remember that? Drug rape in Atlanta? House of a 92-year-old woman? She had a gun. She thought some of the locals were breaking into her house. She actually, they thought she shot three police officers. And I thought, wow, she's pretty good. That was two years old. <laughs> Got three of them. Must have been a whole gang of them. Found out she fired one shot. The cops did all the rest of the shooting and shot three of their own. Got a little excited. Called the uh, four firearms training the police departments. <clears throat> there were no drugs there. And when the cops went on trial for this whole messed up affair, they said, well, we had to do this because the command is on our backs. We keep making drug busts. We get all this federal money you have to produce. And uh, they admitted that they salted the place. You know what that means. There were no drugs there. They put some there. They claimed that they got them. It's part of the raid. So there were cops in prison over this. Something that shouldn't have been done in the first place. That's what happens, and the police do kill people in drug wars, and sometimes they're not even involved in drugs. No kids are caught in a crossfire, making gang shootouts and all that. Somebody's six year old, I covered several of those calls in Northeast Denver. Somebody's small child was killed by a bullet that came flying through the bedroom wall because somebody was driving around trying to shoot somebody next door, but they sprayed half the neighborhood to make sure that they could get the guy they were trying to hit. And little innocents are hurt in that kind of stuff. No one's soliciting another drug user outside the elementary school yard. Hey, kid, come here, I want you to try something. Because there's no profit. If there's no profit, they won't be doing it. No advertising to further drug use. In Switzerland and Holland, where they actually give heroin addicts heroin, it's free, with clean needles. Come into the clinic and give it to you. You don't get to take it out and give it yourself to somebody else. You use it right there. Go out, get on with your life. Not one overdose death since 1994. Asian hepatitis had dropped to the lowest of any countries in Europe. I'm going to give these guys some more candy. <laughs> Crime was cut by 60%. There you go, Mike. All right, Mike's on the job. There's an 82% decline in heroin use. We can help you. I'm glad he brought that stuff to get all you guys excited here. Okay. I know some of these are boring statistics, but they're making a point here. Full time employment, more than double. From 14 to 32 percent in those countries. Unemployment was cut in half. All because they changed. Crime was cut by 60 percent. Most, a lot of their crimes were related to the drug problem, to the addiction to treat people getting the drugs. Cocaine use in the addicts plummeted 35 to 5 percent. Unstable housing situations dropped by nearly two-thirds. <coughs> Homelessness dropped from 12 percent to zero. Drug cause deaths dropped 34 percent in one year between 2001 and 2002. <coughs> Redirect money that we save to programs that offer people hope for the future. Among those might be rehabilitation centers. Other possibilities we think would be guaranteed minimums in education, health care, housing, job training, employment, and livable wages. Those are some possibilities, possible outcomes for a program along the lines of what we're suggesting. And we hope that there are smarter people than us walking around that are thinking about this who can come up with a better program. That 